climate conversations and let's look at the uh, news in print and online this morning. We're joined by the Executive Director of the Australia Institute, Ben Oquis. Good morning, Ben. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. Fascinated by this story in the Sydney Morning Herald this morning. What, what do you make of it all? Yeah, well, a big front page splash to the Sydney Morning Herald saying that the government there is moving with stronger emission reduction targets. A uh, 35 per cent cut by uh, 2030 to help them meet their net zero goal by 2050. Interestingly, all states have a net zero emissions target by 2050. Mm -hmm. The Commonwealth probably doesn't have one, but each state now does. Of course, it comes on the back of um, the Environment Minister's big statement yesterday that bushfires are a result of climate change. And it seems the first kind of sign that there is this kind of emerging pressure from those bushfires leading to political action on climate change, and that's what this looks like. And uh, yeah, this story and certainly uh, Matt Keane's comments yesterday on that link between bushfires and climate change uh, shows there's a, there's a significant disconnect between the New South Wales mm. Liberal Party and their federal colleagues. And uh, I'm, I'm picking up there's a lot of frustration within New South Wales Liberal Party ranks at what they see as the feet dragging by their federal colleagues. Yeah, and of course th those bushfires and that lived real experience in New South Wales is changing perceptions of the public and also the politicians in New South Wales. Mm. So it's really they're really picking up on that community uh, sentiment and I think it's now the first time it's actually driving policy outcomes and it reminds me of that famous quote that uh, John Howard used to quote of Harold Macmillan, the former British Prime Minister, when asked about what was the key thing to learn from politics? Yeah. Events, dear boy, events, mm. and how political leaders respond to events. And it looks like these bushfires are one of those big events that are going to shape uh, politics to some extent and the New South Wales government moving on that. And the letters page of the paper shows that people are, are really energised by this. An interesting letters page, an interesting comment by the editor of the Sydney Morning Herald, Lisa Davies, in that letters page, saying that they've devoted the entire two pages of their letters page to this issue because there's mm. been such an outpouring. And she says there's been 17,000 words come in on the topic uh, and their online comments on top of that, uh, a real outpouring from the community. OK, be very instructive to see how the federal politicians react as this summer goes on. Let's stay with climate. And The Guardian has a story on uh, what critics say are the counting tricks used to achieve emission reduction targets. Yeah, this is a, a new report by Climate Analytics, um, uh, commissioned by the Australia Institute, actually. Climate Analytics is a Berlin-based kind of science and economic uh, policy research centre. It's also covered in the Australian uh, and the Sydney Morning Herald, and it finds that really there's no legal basis to the government using this accounting methodology to count credits from the Kyoto period in the Paris uh, treaty. What they've been calling the carryover. Carryover credits. credits. Or, the, or the accounting trick or the dodgy credits or the Kyoto rort. Uh, it really finds that these are separate legal instruments, the Kyoto and Paris, and there's no real way of connecting the two. Of course, this report's being released uh, in Madrid, where the conference is happening, uh, the annual climate conference is happening, and uh, uh, it's a big bone of contention um, amongst other countries that Australia is wanting to use these Kyoto credits to count towards their 2030 emissions targets. And uh, now to the next story, how governments and regulators try to rein in the tech giants like Google has been an ongoing issue, and the uh, next topic, The Australian has a story on that. Yeah, front page of The Australian is a story about, it says the government is going to today respond to that ACCC inquiry about the digital platforms. It, this, is a, this will be a big story today if that's big true. Story. Yep. It, uh, two weeks ago the front page of The Australian said the government was uh, deferring its response until next year, mm. but this says it's on today. That inquiry start, was commissioned in 2017, uh, reported uh, last year, and the response is this year. It's really about how journalism can survive in the new era and what groups like Facebook and Google um, need to change in order to allow journalism and local content production to have a business model that survives and thrives. So Fletcher and Frydenberg, the front page of The Australian today says we'll be responding to that ACCC digital platforms inquiry. And the last topic here, consumer slump. And gosh, we, there was big news yesterday with uh, Harris Scarf um, closing down. Mm. Um, but also just consumers have just stayed Gloomy. Yeah, well, this uh, latest Westpac Consumer Confidence Survey says it's down again uh, this month. Uh, it's uh, interesting, it says Labor voters are, are much gloomier, a 17% drop for them. Uh, coalition voters uh, up 3%, but overall uh, consumer confidence uh, down again. And this follows on 
uh, from, it points out, those GDP figures for the September quarter showing consumer spending was very weak. Uh, I think it all points to a very interesting mid-year economic financial statement from the government on Monday uh, to see whether the budget's still in good mm. shape. And the interest rate cuts really haven't been working. The tax cuts didn't seem to generate the consumer spending that the government had hoped for. The economy's still very weak. All right. Thanks very much, Ben. Thanks, Lisa. Thank Thanks, Mike. Ben. Yes, it's going to be interesting uh, weeks heading into the end of the year with those Christmas shops and uh, the results that we're going to be seeing. Indeed, and next hour we're looking at uh, what has been a great outpouring of support for these bi-regional...